and welcome to The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, a Let's Play with Link 616, my awakening as a Let's Player. So this week, we are, well not this week, this episode, we are going to go to the water dungeon basically. Angler's Cavern I think it is, but I haven't quite gotten to it yet. So in this episode, we'll be getting key, which requires us to go to the desert. But we need to get one thing before we go to the desert, and it's very important. We need a honeycomb. Why do we need a honeycomb? Because of the trading game. Now, where is that honeycomb? It should be only a few spaces away. The question is, which few spaces? Sure, what could go wrong with a honeycomb with some with a bee clearly there? Well, now that we've done that, it's time to go to the animal village, but before that better get ourselves an ocarina. Now, I'm not actually sure the full story here, but supposedly this game introduced the ocarina to the franchise, but I'm sure that Link to the Past actually had the ocarina, but maybe that's just the GBA version. I've never actually played the SNES version. So, first of all, let's go a dreaming to get our ocarina. And we're going to need the Pegasus boots, which is precisely why we haven't gotten it previously. These moves are actually quite strong. They will deal a lot of damage to you if they hit you. At least, that's how I remember them. I haven't been hit by one yet. I kind of worry about the economy in the Zelda games, actually, given this. Yes, this game world is within the dream itself, but given that I can obtain money in my dreams, that should really put quite a strain on the economy. Right, now I have an ocarina. Time to, pl to learn how to play the ocarina. So, this is currently all I can play. Now I apologise if the music goes really bad here, because this is a really nice tune. I'm just going to mute myself so you can enjoy it. Indeed it does. It's probably one of my favourite musical moments in the game. You can also play a song in front of the windfish at any point to play all the instruments you've collected to find what song they create. This isn't terribly interesting in and of itself, but you can combine if you collect instruments in a different order which is possible, but not really worth the effort. You can generate some interesting different sounds that you would normally never hear. Because each instrument acts independently, and adds to the tune independently. What the hell, let's get ourselves a Guardian Acorn. So, Animal Village, up we go. I think that's just a secret seashell in there, but we shall find out. Ooh, 50 rupees. 
We'll be revisiting that house when we get to the next dungeon. So, we're nearly at the village. The animal village in itself doesn't have too much going for it, other than a interesting enough bit of music. Wrong way. Better use Pe Pegasus Boots to speed things up a little bit. And speed we go. And we've got the animal village. So, first things first, I need to trigger a little teleporter. So there are three or four of these, I can't remember exactly. And they're used to shift you between some of the important regions. There's one up near the mountains, which, in all honesty, I should have actually activated when I was up in the mountains. Anyway. Let us give this bear our honey. The little icon there looks suspiciously like a ham, doesn't it? As opposed to honeycomb. Get Marin and bring her to take to sing a song? That sounds like a new quest. So let us go back and see where Marin has gone. Or Marin, I'm not ever sure how to really pronounce her name. she be? I wonder if she's at the beach. I'm sorry there's not really a lot to say on this episode, it's a lot more straightforward than some of the others, and yes, we do get a little bit more story in this episode in particular, well not story so much, a little bit of background on who Marin is, and it, the conversation we're about to see, I think, does inform her character and our opinion of her character quite considerably. And it's not deep, deep characterization, but it's definitely something that you remember. So, I'm going to silence myself again just so we can enjoy this cutscene. I love how unseriously it takes that. We get very similar music to when we originally got the sword. That just little, you've got Marin, just like she was an item. I'm sure someone finds that terribly, terribly offensive. However, it's time to have some fun with Marin. Because, oh, sorry about that little sound issue. Thank you. 
So that ruins the secretiveness of it, but... Anyway, I'm sure that someone is offended by the fact that the game poses that you can obtain Marin as if she was just an item. However, I think it's pretty clear that this is just a silly joke. Right, now, I'm sure there are other things tricky with Marin, but the ones that I know about are just a short amount, a small few. Ooh, wait, I'm not supposed to move, that's right. Because I need Marin to fall right on top of me. Right, yo then. And time to play the trendy game. Because, what else would you do on a date? Well, you heard the man. Pros aren't allowed. It's a little bit disheartening. If your game has sufficient amounts of death, you should be welcoming pros. But, alas, not every game manager really wants that. Especially one in which gambling is a core part of it. Now, before we head up to the um, desert, back in Animal Village, I'm just going to pick up another lot of secret medicine, because since I was being lazy and efficient during the... Um, Last dungeon, I ran out of life, and needed to use a secret medicine to revive myself. Luckily, Crazy Tracy's always here to help. Ah, good, I'm getting a cheap deal today. I probably mentioned this last time, but just in case I didn't, she will randomly alternate between, I think it's 28 and 42 rupees. So with that all done, actually, while we're here, it's probably worth activating the um, mountain ranger's warpy, teleporty thing, because I'm so eloquent with words, which is exactly why I'm doing a let's play. Right, well, while we're here anyway... So let's have a quick browse of what we've already taken photos of. A little bit of trip man down memory lane. Now we actually missed this one in um, the videos. It is actually in... it did actually happen while I was playing. But this was the parallel dimension thing. Link's eyes. That is so odd in this art style. I mean, that style is kind of odd in itself, really. Although, given those shots, it really reminds me a lot of Wind Waker, of all things. I really like the art style in Wind Waker, of course, as do I think most fan, most gamers, really, at this point, anyway. Well, at least the ones who'd be doing Let's Plays. Well, while I'm here... Yes, yes.
let's get our ocarina and we will see what our song currently sounds like. Did Myron just say what I think she said when I played the Ocarina? She's horrible! I think I thought she was a nice girl. Those innocent eyes, that long flowing hair. So that's where we're going to go to our next dungeon. And through the teleport. Maring whizzing with me. And off to wake the walrus. Which you haven't actually seen yet because I haven't shown them to you. Oh, the hint that the walrus gives us that we should probably be going to Marin is that when you get, try and engage a conversation before he's before you have Marin with you, he'll sort of go zzz and then have a little icon of Marin in his text boxes. Power of music changes everything. Right here then. To be a little bit of a tangent here, I think Marin is probably a little bit of the inspiration for Nairu from Oracle of the Ages. When we finish this, we'll go to the animal village again and just see how she sings to the animal friends. And while I don't have a screenshot to compare it to of the early Oracle games, I think that the comparison is pretty apparent. Worth noting that that took a long time for me to work out originally when playing, because you have to give, in order for Marin to appear at the beach for you to take with her, you actually need to have given the bear the pine, the honeycomb. And then she appears, so then you can do all this. Until you do that though, there's absolutely nothing to go on. Well not absolutely nothing, but it's not quite as apparent as some of the previous things feel that they were, although that could just be my memory fooling me and this bit being not quite as widely replayed. Yay, Al. Well, time to do some mountain climbing then. I don't know how this glitch actually works, where you can be walking backwards and things. It seems like there's some lag in the turning, the way Link turns in certain situations. But I haven't quite isolated yet, although I can repeat it without a lot of difficulty. It seems to relate to pushing up. Ah, this is the sequence I want to mention with Nairi's love. So the start of Nairi's love, um, well not Nairi's love. 
The start of Oracle of the Ages is of Nairu singing to all her animal friends, and some human friends too. Obviously, it shares sprites, because the Oracle games pinched quite a lot of graphical assets from Link's Awakening, and use a lot of the same, and use the same engine basically with a few minor tweaks. Marin sprites also share a lot in common with Nairu and the way she sings, I think. I may be misremembering that. But, the legacy's still there, and I'm not sure how important it really is, but it's certainly something that I appreciate. Well, I don't really appreciate the fact Capcom were a little bit lazy, but you know what I mean. I hope. Anyway, we're up here. So, put in the key. Dun, 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 dun. Don't worry, I'll never sing again. I promise. Maybe. Singing is very bad. When I was preparing to do this Let's Play, one of the key bits of advice that was given as to mistakes that many people make is actually singing. So, I have taken that to heart for the most part. However, every now and then, you will maybe hear a few notes captured relatively badly by this microphone. Right, moving forwards. Guy the acorn that we can't reach, so we will not be cursed by that music once more. We can't get that chest yet, so don't worry. It once we get a hook shot, I believe we can get it. But for now, nothing to worry about. That's just the rupees. We actually don't really need any more money than we currently have. Now, what we're going to do right here isn't strictly necessary, but it will save us time later, as we will be wanting a um, complete collection of the trading items. And right now, we are going to save the father of the child who we gave the Yoshi doll to. Yes, we can give him some bitties. One beautiful hibiscus. I don't know what his wife's going to say when he gave the hibiscus to another man. But, that's their problem as a family. Right, so we're nearly there. These all come into play a little bit later, I believe, particularly when going to the Eagle Dungeon. So, now that we've looked through all that, jump down, die from the height, although obviously Link can survive, and go into Angler's Tunnel. Okay, I had it wrong. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you really enjoyed it, and I look forward to comments, feedback, and hope you enjoy the next episode.